Lord, let us um, to sit, let us stand for the reading of the Word of God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let's open our book to Genesis 1. Let us start from verse 11. You have a shout, Amen. It says, and God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in, is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good. Hallelujah, let us bow our head. Heavenly Father, we do thank you, God. We praise you. We worship you, God. We thank you, God, for your sweet presence here in this place, oh God. We thank you for the word, oh God, that you are doing here in this place, for the many testimonies, oh God. It is nothing good that we have that, oh God, but we give you the glory and the honor and the praise for everything, oh God, that you are allowed to take place in our life, oh God. We are so grateful and thankful, oh God. And as your word, oh God, you are faithful, oh God. Hallelujah. Let it go forth with understanding, oh God, and the restriction of your power, oh God. Hallelujah. Release your anointing here in this place, oh God. We thank you, Lord. We praise for your worship. And the name that is above all name, we pray. Let everybody say in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. I would like to preach to you real quick. What kind of seed are you yielding? And um, as the many testimonies have come forth, um, Pastor Mac has mentioned it a lot. It's all about influence. And influence is all dependent on how you act. You can influence somebody in a positive way or in a negative way. So it's all depend on who you hang out with. Look at your neighbor and say, it all matters about where you are, who you hang out with. It matters. Yeah. Hallelujah, Jesus. As Minister Philip mentioned this morning, um, Barabbas was known by his actions, so um, based on what they saw him do, so they describe it. And there's object objective information and subjective information. So objective, subjective, subjective. Like, um, so basically our actions as Christians is of the utmost of importance because it affects the people that are seeing us. Um, some of us um, have jobs, some of us have schools, some of us um, like when you're walking in the streets, so no matter where you are, um, people are watching you. And you can't be acting in a certain way and then expecting that you're going to be ministering um, to the person about coming to church. Right. Uh, as it is written in Matthew 7 16, it says, By their fruit, you shall know them. So uh, the question is, what kind of fruit are you bearing? What kind of seed? The purpose of the fruit, actually, if you look at the whole process of uh, a tree, it starts from the seed. So the seed is the first thing. So the seed has to be planted first and foremost. Then it becomes a tree after you water it. And after that, it bears fruit. Amen? So as I was reading this, I began to think, okay, what is the seed? And if you turn your uh, Bibles to Luke 8, 11, it says, now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. The oh. the name of the seed is the word of God. The seed is the word of God. Hallelujah. So we know where the seed, what the seed is or who the seed is already because it says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So the seed was the word of God. And Mark 4, 11 goes and says, the sower soweth the seed. So basically, what we need to be sowing, we need to be sowing the seed of God into the heart of those that don't believe. And how do we do that? The word, the Bible says, faith come by hearing, hearing the word of God. 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 All right, not be watching Lifetime now, okay? Come by the word of God. So you have to pay attention of what you do at your own home. Don't mind me. Hallelujah, Jesus. So the process is you plant the seed. So the seed has been planted in us as children of the Most High God. Because we come here every Sunday, we hear the word every Sunday. And I must say, the word that we come coming forth from this swampy, they are truly amazing. I'm truly blessed. I don't know about you, but when I come, I get mine. I, mean, I, can't, I can't get yours for you, but I got mine. Praise God. So now, one thing that is important is that we know every seed, in order for it to grow to become a tree, it has to be watered. So where does water come from, I ask? 
alright, as that is written, he that believeth for me, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Hallelujah, Jesus. So we have the seed and the seed is being watered. Why? Because faith of my hearing when we, when we hear the word of God, we believe. So out of a belly, there is a river of living water that is flowing, that is watering that seed. So now it turns into a tree. And then the tree now is a fruit. So what are the fruits? Everybody you know what the fruits are? Let's go to Galatians 5, 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. But that your neighbor says, they get arrested for loving too much. Praise God. So now we know where the fruit comes from. What is the purpose of the fruit? What does it does for us as Christians? Um, one of the things that always, like that's me, I have a peculiar mind. So one of the things that always amazes me is that I know we go through some ups and downs. I mean, um, it just been fall seven times. So we all we all go into fall. But you cannot be depressed as a Christian all the time. You, you just cannot be depressed because um, you remember the song says, I still have my joy. Do you still have your joy? After all that I've been going through, yes, I still have my joy. So don't let the enemy take what's yours. That's yours. My peace I give on you. It says, right, John 6 27. My peace, God, you're not supposed to have peace. You're not supposed to be confused all the time. It's okay to ask questions when it comes to the Word of God, but you're not supposed to be confused. You have a network of individuals, anointed men and women of God, that knows the Word of God. If you lack understanding, knowledge is not enough. You need understanding. If you need understanding, seek somebody. See somebody that has been in the church for a long time. And from what I've heard, I've just been here for about three years. To be honest, if I need some advice, I'll probably go see Adrian and Ariel because like although they're young, don't don't let don't be fooled. They know their word, they read their word. So I do thank God for young people in Christ that just know the word of God and invest their time doing what they're supposed to. Um, so now we know the purpose of the food is um, that you have an illness. And the number one tool in business, but if you might be able to confirm this with me, the number one tool in business in advertising. And advertising just doesn't work, uh, I don't know about you, but it just doesn't work when it's like I'm just hearing it over the radio. I just like watching advertising on TV and that's how they always get um, the majority of folks that buys product, they get them from impulse buying. Not only are you watching those things, they tell me it's made with titanium. First of all, some people don't even know what a titanium is, but it's, like it's made with titanium, so on and so forth. And then like, you know, they keep reading the same thing. It's like $29.99, buy one, get one free. Like, you know, they just show you all the side of it, the display, and they put it on display. And as you watch, so like, wow, you just look at it. You don't even need it. You have like a bunch of parts and pair, but you don't need it. But it looks good. It sounds good. Buy one, get one free. I need that. Praise God. So the number one tool is advertising in the best. Um, the preferable way is to display it on TV. Now I was processing this in my head. Why is it so interesting when you see it on TV instead of when you just, just hear it? As it says in the Bible, faith by hearing. So if I hear it, it should be enough. But look at it that way. The world does not operate the same way that we do. A lot of people, they will tell you, you know what? I won't believe it until I see it. So we have to understand that the world operates by a different standard than the one that we as Christians are believing. So that being said, that also brings forth the fruit of the Spirit. Um, joy, there's sadness. Um, like joy for us, there's sadness, depression, like all this, whatever. There's, we have peace and confusion. So now we as Christians, we have to understand that what we do greatly influence our workplace, we greatly influence our school. Right. So if you go somewhere, somebody's yelling at you, you yelling at, 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 at their back, you actually um, compensate in sin for sin. So you do me wrong, I do you wrong. You yell at me, I raise my voice louder than you. But it's not supposed to be that way for us as Christians. We have to be a role model. Even though we, when we go into a conflict with somebody outside in the world, you have to understand there are other people watching and you cannot be going around saying that you're a Christian and you know, you're not showing mercy, you're not showing love, you're not showing peace. You know, so you have to be able, temperance being like self constraint restraint, right? So you have to be able to control yourself when you are outside in the world because what you do greatly influence what somebody else will do, whether somebody will, will listen to you to come to church or not. Can we get an amen? Amen. amen. And in addition to that, not everybody has the same mentality. 
some individuals like Brother Philip and I, I remember we used to go um, passing out tracks. And Brother Philip and I, we really outgoing. And Brother Philip be talking to we talk to everybody. We just like, hey, we don't just want to pass you a fly, but we want to talk to you. We want to share something with you. Let us know something about you. So it's more than just passing out flyers. Some people are struggling to even pass out flyers. And if that's not you, I know God is going to get you to that place where you're going to be comfortable enough to be able to get to that level where you can actually start communicating with somebody. But in the meantime, there is a better way. The best way, I believe, to reach out to our souls is by practicing what you preach. Amen. Yes, amen. That's way to minister to somebody is by practicing what you preach. Even though you don't say anything to them, but by what they see, they'll be like, you know what, this is a very gen this is a gentleman, this is a kind guy. But if you say, you know, but he's a smart guy. Why? Because he has great IQ, you always get eight. So what you actually are advertising, <laughs> what you are advertising is being shown, is being seen by everybody because of the way that you are acting. Amen? So now, that being said, why is it upon that we have the fruit of the Spirit? It's not meant for us. It is great when we come here and we, you know, uh, we, we have fun. We have great um, joy in the Holy Ghost. We, we just shout and we hear the great testimonies. But it's also important that if we're not uh, verbally preaching the Word or ministering the Word to somebody's spirit, Hallelujah, Jesus. We at least need to display, at least see what I'm working with, see the joy. Uh, one of the things that I've heard... Um, there's a gentleman, he's a Jehovah's Witness, witness and I've been ministering to him, and one of the things he has been telling me that my mom has been um, saying about me, which I did not know, but she never told me myself. She was telling everybody that I am a pastor, I was my son, and I am a pastor, so on and so forth, which is, which is funny to me because I've been laughing. But um, when, I realize, when I realize is that my mom has been in my life, my brother has been in my life, so they've seen me transition from somebody who was in the world into somebody who is not in Christ. And they can see the difference. Praise God. So even though I have not even said anything verbally to them, but the life that I live displays Christ. So it is of the utmost importance that we as Christians need to understand that yes, I may not have the strength and the courage yeah. to go and minister to somebody who's yeah. on the street. Everybody is not, doesn't have that brother Robson mentality. Everybody doesn't have that minister field mentality. You know, but at least um, if you not, don't have the strength to verbally do it, at least let your lifestyle show that right. you're a Christian. I still believe holiness is still right. Yeah. If you start dressing, the, you know, where you're all stirred the way you're supposed to wear it, people are going to be asking questions. And that, in fact, if you think about it, it creates a window of opportunity. Because yeah. the first thing somebody's going to ask, why are you wearing all dress? It's winter time. Then what are you going to say? It's because of the God that I serve. He requires that I wear all dress, so I wear it. And that also, so that gives you the opportunity um, that you can minister to them and start talking to them more about God. Why are you always happy? Your life is a mess. You lost your husband. You lost your house. Why are you still praising God? What has God done for you? God is good. Because even though I am in my mess, I still have peace. I still have joy. I know my God will be God. So therefore, in the midst of my chaos, I can still praise Him. Hallelujah, Jesus. And if you look at the, one of the stories in the Bible that I found very amazing is that when Jesus was in the boat and the storm was coming, and Jesus was taking a good nap. I don't even know why they disturbed him. He was sleeping. He needed the rest because he'd been working hard. And they were working, when they woke him, they were panicking. And we as humans, that's what we do. We panic when we see like our life, especially um, after you work so hard, you know, you work hard to keep your house, you work hard to keep everything that you have. And to see that it's about to be taken away, and this is the only thing that you have. And sometimes, if you have kids, your family is looking to you to provide. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's tough to see every all those things being taken from, away from you just in a flash like that. Just a single mistake and just your whole life crumbles down. But one of the things that we need to realize is that the God that we serve, He is still a provider. Hallelujah. Just like Jesus was in the boat, and when the people came to the storm, He says, You know what? Hey, I'm here. Like, come down. I'm here. Obviously, they say that, but please be still that he commanded this, the wind to stop. Says they um, told the wind to cease, and everything was back to normal. Then, all that I realized that God needs to do in the midst of your chaos, in the midst of your situation, is just to speak a word, and everything will go back to normal. 
So therefore, we as your children of God, and I, I, I wonder why does think God wants us to deal with those things? Because if the Bible says, cast your cares upon me, why do you want me to cast your cares upon me, you Lord Jesus? So I've been wondering why. The reason why I've come up with, you might be able to agree with me, is that God wants you to be worry free so you can be able to praise him freely. Hallelujah, Jesus. So if you are free of your cares, why do you excuse them why you can't praise God? What's holding you back? Hallelujah, Jesus. So therefore, with that being said, my job is not to worry about the situation that is in my life, the chaos that is in my life. It's to always make sure that I am lifting up the name of Jesus and magnifying the name of Jesus and allow somebody else to see the life, the joy that is in Christ, the peace that is in Christ. And, um, um, <laughs> and uh, one of the things that uh, I found very interesting when this is let there be light. And you know, as we that lives in Christ, we are considered as children of light, and people that are in the world are children of darkness. So that being said, we as children of light, when people see the light of Christ in us, it baffles them. They can't understand why somebody who's going through so much yet is still praising God. I don't understand you. Help me explain explain yourself to me as to why you're still happy even though you just lost your house. You just lost your husband, you lost your car. Your kids are yelling at you, disrespecting you all the time. And um, as it is written in Ephesians, for the rest of that in his flesh and blood, it's still a spiritual battle. There are bad spirit and good spirit. I mean, the only good spirit is the spirit of God, but there are bad spirit that are against the word of God, that are against God. So therefore, people who don't in light when you are displaying too much Christ. One of the things that somebody once told me, which I found very surprising, is that why are you always smiling? At first, it shocked me. I found it to be very sad because smiling, laughter is just like a regular part of human life. If somebody tell you a joke, you laugh. So he was telling me why you're always smiling. Then, um, and as you drive by and as you look um, at the world and the, uh, the people in the community, one of the things that you realize is that uh, the majority of them, sadly to say, they are always depressed. They're always walking with their head down. They're sad. They feel lonely, they feel alone, they have nobody to comfort them. Some of them they don't even have their family member are just walking away from them because the life that they live is different than the life that we live. So those individuals that are walking on the street, the only way that they will decide to give their life to God is by seeing individuals like us that are allowing the power of God, the anointing of God to flow through us. By the thing that we do sometimes, the simple things that's just like singing, which is one of the things that I realized I do. I didn't even notice I do it. I guess it's just instinct or uh, automatic. I just praise, be singing to God. I love to sing in case you guys were not aware. But uh, one, that's my last testimony. After that, I'll be closing. I went to work. Um, I went to work and I was tired because it was, it was a long week. And uh, I went to work. Did we saw me? I went to work um, 30 minutes early. And, because I figured if I go home, I'm going to fall asleep and I'm going to be waking up the next day. So I decided to do the smart thing and just went to work 30 minutes early. And I went there. She had a great conversation with me for a good 20 minutes. Then afterward, um, amazingly, you know, she was, and then I started singing. Then she was like, oh, that is the Robson that I know. Then I'm like, what do you mean? And she says, I love it when you sing to God. And I was so blessed by that. Some of the little things that we do, we don't... Um, give value to somebody else it means so much and um, especially there are um, a lot of Christians they don't want to confess their faith and um, I went through a clinical group I'm telling you um, I did not know anybody was a Christian I, I didn't know anybody was a Christian I'm being serious right now and I just be, I'm going there first of all we're not supposed to be singing in the clinical group but I just can't help it so I started singing anyway then um, as I started singing when I started going my name is Jeremy as I started singing and somebody else started singing, then all four of us started singing, I'm like, okay. Then, um, apparently they're all Christian, but um, until I started singing, I never knew, because um, some of the way they talk was different. So, sometimes, you'll be surprised, there's a lot of Christian, they, it's just, you'll be hearing them, and it's, when they started to confess their faith, I was like, eh, did I hear you yesterday? But, that is not my place, but there's a lot of people, they still ashamed. It's not just about, the life that we live, it's not simply about, um, reaching out to the people that are lost in the world, but it also helped like those that are 
have been baptized in Jesus' name, even some that have been filled with the Holy Ghost, to be confident in the God that they serve. It strengthens them, it edifies them, it makes them feel like, you know what, this is possible. You can do it too, I'm doing it. So I would highly encourage you, my brothers and sisters, that the life that you live, that allow it to speak, not just by what you say, but allow Christ in you to be displayed. Just advertise what you're selling. You said no. You don't want you, there's only one true living God. So you actually be an ambassador of Christ. You are explaining the God that you serve by the way that you live, by the way that you dress, by the way that you talk. Praise God by the way that you walk. So everything that you do, um, even though people don't always come to you, some people are, not, are embarrassed. They're not going to come straight up and say, you know what? Um, on the first day, they start asking you questions. But keep in mind that eventually, gradually, it's going to start changing their life. It's going to start changing their mind. Of why are you always happy? Why are you always living the way that you're living? So I would highly encourage my brothers and sisters, don't just be hearers of the word, but start being doers of the word. God bless you all in Jesus' name.